All right, so begins lecture 12 on surfaces in R3. Um, so what is a surface and, you know, how do we describe that carefully? Let me give you some examples. Um, a balloon. A balloon's a nice example of a surface if you ignore this bit right here. Um, you know, if you get close enough to it, it resembles something that basically looks like a flat plane. Um, now, another example of a surface would be something like this. If you ignore the thickness, all right, like a cylinder is a good example of a surface in R3. Um, another example of a surface would be something like just a strip. You could have a strip. Now, the surfaces we want to talk about today don't really have edges, so you should think of this, think of this as a fuzzy edge. It's kind of fuzzy. And uh, those cuts, ignore the cuts for the moment and imagine they're not there. But, you know, that's a, that's a surface. Of course, you could take it and bend it. And, but the surfaces we're talking about won't be bent, all right? I mean, you could maybe bend one surface into another, right? I can take this and go from a strip and bend it into the cylinder, right? But um, our surfaces will be something fixed, all right? Later, we'll think about bending one surface into another. Uh, of course, that's an interesting question. When can you bend one surface into another, and how do you do that? But that's, that's for a later day. But the one thing we don't want to allow is something like this. We, our surfaces won't have self-intersection. Like this, this is no allowed. Well, I mean, so that's, that's not entirely true. They can have self-intersection, like this kind of has a lot of self-intersections, doesn't it, in some sense or another? Um, well, I guess if you think about, well, anyway, I don't know. But this doesn't have, this would not have self-intersection, whatever that means. Now, this does. Um, but more to the point, locally, this doesn't look like a plane at that intersection point, that crease point, right? So we, we, we need a definition to try to avoid that, and what is it, you know, what do you mean when you say something is a surface, or more precisely, a regular, uh, regular smooth surface in R3? Well, it all goes back to the definition of, for us, a so-called coordinate patch. So we'll take X, capital X I'm going to use, uh, because O'Neill uses a bold little x, but it's hard for me to write that here. And later I might want to distinguish between capital X and little x, the x coordinate, coordinate mapping. So capital X from open set, open set meaning that um, each point's interior, meaning you can fit a little open disk around each point in that set D, uh, the usual metric topological notion of openness. So this is a coordinate patch. Coordinate patch. If you have three conditions, those three conditions, number one, x has to be one-to-one. -one. It has to be injective, right? Now that's a global condition on the whole domain. Um, it has to be smooth. has to be smooth, that means you can take as many derivatives with respect to the Cartesian variables in the domain as you like. X has to be regular. Now, what that means is that the if you look at the Jacobian matrix of X, it has rank 2. Um, and I guess you should talk about the point dependence, right, at each point. And then all this together just gives you a coordinate patch. We say it gives you a proper coordinate patch. Let me add that in green. If you have one other condition, if you also have that, the inverse mapping, which of course would go from the range of X, the image of the patch, um, back to D is continuous. Now that, it turns out, helps you to avoid those self-intersection examples like I was showing you a second ago. This also would mean that the patch itself is an open map. It would take open sets to open sets. Um, well, I guess that's a question though. What do, what do we mean by open set um, on a subset of R3, right? So we're trying to describe what is a surface. So I guess before I even talk about, you know, this coordinate patch business, let me just say, you know, a, um, so consider 
m, which is just going to be some subset of R3, we say u, a subset of m, is an open set if there exists, say, um, uh, an open set you know, uh, let's see here, I'll call it, for lack of imagination, U tilde um, in R3 such that what? Well, such that U is equal to um, U tilde intersect M. So, in other words, I'm, I'm giving this subset of R3 what's called the subspace topology. Um, you get open sets in M simply by intersecting open sets in R3 with M itself. Now, it turns out that uh, you can, you know, it suffices to use um, U tilde equal to, like, balls of radius epsilon. So the ball of radius epsilon centered at P would be something like, you know, um, x in R3, such that the distance from x to P is less than epsilon, the so-called epsilon ball, all right? So <clears throat> that gives us our notion of um, sort of our basic open set uh, in the surface are going to be intersections of... Uh, well, let me just draw a picture. So here's the surface, roughly speaking. I don't know, I could... So you pick some point in the surface, an open set. What you do is you take an open ball in R3, right? And that open ball will intersect the surface in some way, right? And then this is basically your 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 basic open set in M, and that's that's the notion of open set we use for for a surface. Um, although I haven't defined surface yet, but subset of M. Now, to say that M is a surface, all right, what do we mean by that? Well, let me give you a definition. Definition. M is surface if M is a subset of R3. I should say it's a surface of R3. I mean, the notion of surface is more general than this, but a surface in R3. If M is a subset of R3, and for each point P in M, uh, there exists an open, open set U in M um, containing P and a proper patch X. Sorry, I seem to be getting too low here. A proper patch, a proper patch X from D to X to D, for which uh, U is a subset of X of D. Right. And you can do that at each point P. So let's see here, to, to, if this is the picture here uh, of the surface, if that's an arbitrary point P, I can find this U tilde which I've shaded in blue then I can find some proper patch. The image of the patch being like this, right? So X is a proper patch. So X is mapping from the parameter space, which we usually use V and U here. And um, I'll, I'll be like O'Neill, I'll use, I'll think of D as being a, a rectangle. Of course, it could be any old open set that you like in, our, in the plane, all right? And so this proper patch takes this little rectangle and maps it to this, you know, curved subset of R3, which we 
that's that's the part. It's you know it's not the whole surface M, but it, at each point you can find a patch which covers at least locally to that point, right? Now you you may need more than one patch to cover the whole surface, um, but that's the idea. At each point you can find a proper patch which which locally um, maps R2 to the surface. Um, oh, by the way, we say that the surface is simple. We say. M is simple, the surface, if what, if um, M is actually equal to X of D for some proper patch. So um, if you just have one coordinate patch that covers the whole surface, then we say it's a simple surface, right? A lot of the surfaces we think about in Calculus 3 are simple surfaces. So anyway, I'm going to stop there for just a moment, go eat my lunch, and then I'll come back and pick this lecture up again. Thanks.